This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 747, Three Practices to Become a Great Listener, by Christine Comiford of SmartTribesInstitute.com. Hello, everybody. I am Greg Audino, and this is the show where I help you optimize the relationships in your life by narrating from blogs, with permission from the authors, of course. So, sit back and relax, just like you do with your favorite audiobook. Today, I am excited to introduce a brand new author to you, Christine Comiford, who is here to tell us about listening, a highly important tool that, quite frankly, we don't focus on enough. I'll tell you more about Christine right after the reading, but for now, let's get right into it and start optimizing your life. Three Practices to Become a Great Listener by Christine Comiford of SmartTribesInstitute.com Are any of these phrases familiar to you? If so, you may need to brush up on what it means to be a great listener. You just don't understand. How many times do I have to repeat myself? I can't tell if you're distracted or you just don't care. Whether you're hearing these phrases or saying them, they're all signs of ineffective listening. And ineffective listening can lead to damaged relationships, inefficient use of time and energy, and silos between key people in an organization. There's no reason to suffer these consequences when, in reality, it's not that hard to be a great listener. Here are three steps to being a great listener. Step 1. Build rapport. By building rapport, we make the other person feel safe by giving them the experience that we are the same as them. The more safety you provide to another person, the more safety you provide for yourself when interacting with him or her. This frees up your attention and energy to listen to what the other party is communicating. It also frees up their attention and energy to express what they are truly thinking. Rapport is about caring, not controlling or manipulating. There are many ways to build rapport. Here are the two we suggest everyone start with. Physical body mirroring. By mirroring a person's posture full body position, you step into what it feels like to be them. So, for example, if someone is leaning back and has his arms crossed, you do the same. Always pause before mirroring so that changing your position isn't rushed or abrasive. Keyword and gesture backtracking. Mirroring the words a person uses to describe their experience and the gestures they use too furthers same as. If someone says, I'd like to go the extra mile while slicing the air with their hand, You can respond by gesturing similarly and backtracking their keywords. Yes, let's go the extra mile. Note, this does not mean paraphrasing, which does not build rapport. Using their keywords is important. Step 2. Use the meta model. You'll often hear people use nonspecific phrases, such as, I find this task too difficult. Often, we assume we understand what the person means by too difficult. For a software programmer, Too difficult might mean they have been asked to develop a better version of Microsoft Word by themselves. For you, too difficult might mean you need more time to complete a specific task. We all have our biases. Key to clarifying what someone means is to use what's called the meta model in neurolinguistics. The meta model helps us see the world from the other person's perspective rather than our own. The most useful meta model questions you can use to show you're a great listener include. What specifically? How specifically? And in comparison to who slash what exactly? Given the example we discussed, you could ask the person any of the following questions. What specifically is this task that you find too difficult? How is this task too difficult specifically? Too difficult in comparison to what specifically? Step 3. Make it easier for them to express themselves. What we say to someone can make it easier for them to express themselves and feel heard. Key is to first understand the root cause of why ineffective listening and communicating occurs. A lack of the three key emotional experiences of safety, belonging, and mattering. Number one, lack of safety. If the persons in communication do not feel safe, they'll likely be in critter state. This can lead to defensive behavior, aggressive interactions, and conflict avoidance. Rather than telling each other openly what they mean, a lot of their attention is directed to making sure they aren't being harmed emotionally or physically. Number two, lack of belonging. 
Without sufficient belonging, people will not care to share what they want to say, and they won't care to listen to what others want to share either. People want to feel connected to and supported by the people they belong with, colleagues, industry peers, friends, and family. Number three, lack of mattering. If two people communicating don't make each other feel they are important and they matter, it's difficult to feel heard, understood, and respected. People want to know they count, that they make a difference, and are contributing to the greater good. Safety, belonging, and mattering are essential to your brain and your ability to perform at work, at home, and in life overall. In every communication, we are subconsciously reinforcing or reaching out for more safety, belonging, and mattering. Try these three steps and start becoming a great listener. You'll find your interactions will be more fun and more fulfilling as well. You just listened to the post titled, Three Practices to Become a Great Listener, by Christine Comiford of SmartTribesInstitute.com. Here at Optimal Relationships Daily, we understand that navigating sensitive issues such as money and health can be extremely stressful. And such stress and anxiety can easily create family conflicts and affect your relationships. Before that happens, know that BetterHelp is here to help you cope with your emotions. BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your personal licensed professional therapist, providing a safe and private online environment for you at your convenience. They have professional counselors specializing in depression, family conflicts, grief, and more to help you out. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. BetterHelp is not self-help. It is professional counseling where everything you share is confidential. Guys, I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com ORD. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash O-R-D. And a little bit about Christine. She is a leadership and culture coach at Smart Tribes Institute, where she helps you align your behaviors with strategies that cultivate high potential talent from within your organization. I think that should come as no surprise uh, to anyone based on that wonderful and well-thought-out article she provided us with today. It's easy sometimes to dismiss conversations whether we're the ones that want someone else to listen or are being asked to listen ourselves. But Christine did such a great job of illustrating the nuances of these interactions and the part they play in creating ideal conversations for both parties. So check out smarttribesinstitute.com for a lot more. We always encourage you to check out our contributor shows and show them support. And I can tell you that Christine's content is particularly strong. We have now reached the end of today's episode, my dear friends. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.